Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to walk you through an iOS interview problem, building a simple world clock app. I was asked similar questions in interviews at Uber and Spotify, so today I want to show you how to do it. Usually in these interviews you get a mock-up or just a verbal description of the app. Then you share your screen, open Xcode and code it from scratch. If you've only been prepping with lead code, this can really catch you off guard. So, here's what we need to do. A simple app that shows the current time in different cities, grouped by continent – America, Europe, Asia, and so on. We've got some starter data with cities like New York, London, Paris – you get the idea. Our goal is to build an app that shows the current time for every listed location and updates it every second. How will we do this? We'll create a Swift UI list with custom cell for each city. Each city cell will be its own Swift UI view. We'll follow an MVVM architecture and bind our views to their corresponding view models using Swift UI's at observed object. There are two ways to implement this: one global timer for all locations or a separate timer for each location. I prefer a single global timer to save memory and CPU and to ensure every clock ticks in perfect sync. All right, let's move on to coding. First, we'll create three folders – models, view models, and views – and stub out empty files. Under models, we'll have continent and location. In view models, we'll add continent view model, location view model, and world clock view model. Finally, in views, we'll create city row view and move our root content view into that folder. All right, let's start with the basic building block of the app the continent model. I am making it conform to identifiable so we can use it easily inside Swift UI list views and codable so it's future proof. In case we decide to load this data from a file or an API later on. Each continent has a unique ID, a name like Europe or Asia, and a list of location objects. I'm giving ID a default value using UUID, which makes it easier to create instances without manually generating IDs every time. So this one's super clean, no logic, just a well-structured data model. Next up, let's define the location struct. This represents individual cities or places inside each continent. Like continent, it conforms to identifiable and codable. It has its own unique ID with a default UUID, a name like London or Tokyo, and the crucial time zone string, which we'll use later to figure out what time is it in that location. Again, the initializer lets us easily create locations without worrying about IDs every time. Now that we have our data models, let's create a view model to connect the model with our UI. This continent view model is a final class, which means it's not meant to be subclassed, a good practice for performance and clarity. It also conforms to identifiable. Inside, it keeps the same ID and name from the continent model, but the key difference is that it converts each location into a location view model. This mapping is important because the location view model will handle logic like formatting time and publishing updates, stuff the plain data model doesn't do. So here the view model acts as a bridge, preparing the data in a way the UI can easily use. Next up is the location view model, which is where the magic happens for each city or location. It conforms to observable object so our SwiftUI views can listen for changes and identifiable to work smoothly in lists. We keep ID and name from the model, but now the time zone property is private, because it's just used internally for formatting. The published property current time string is marked as private set, meaning the UI can read it, but only this class can update it. This encapsulation is a nice way to keep control over state changes. In the initializer, we assign the time zone safely. If the string is invalid, we default to the current time zone. Then we call update immediately with the current date to set the initial time string. The update time method formats the time using date.format style, customized with the time zone and showing hours, minutes, and seconds. This means every time our global timer fires, we call update to refresh the string, and SwiftUI updates the view automatically. Here we're using the modern date.format style API 
instead of the old date formatter. The great thing is, with date format style, we don't need to worry about expensive caching or reuse like before. It's lightweight and efficient by design. Now let's look at the world clock view model. This is our main view model that drives the entire app's UI. It's a final class, conforming to observable object, which lets SwiftUI listen to its published changes. Here we have add published array of continent view model. This is what our views observe to display continents and their cities. We also keep a private timer cancelable to hold on the combined timer subscription. Inside, there is a static default data property with an array of continents and their locations. This is the initial cities dataset. The initializer allows injecting custom data, great for testing or flexibility, but by default it uses our default data. After mapping continents into view models, we immediately start a timer. The start timer method creates a single combined timer that fires every second with a small 0.1 tolerance to help the system optimize CPU usage by batching work more efficiently. It's a simple trick to keep the timer lightweight without sacrificing visual accuracy. The timer publishes on the main thread and on each tick it calls update locations. Notice how we use flat map slash locations to flatten all the locations across all continents. Then call update time on each location view model to refresh the display time string. This solution uses a single global timer for all locations, which keeps things efficient and simple even as we add more cities. Now, let's create a simple Swift UI view to show each city and its current time. I'm defining a city row view. It takes a location view model as an observed object. This is important because the view needs to listen to changes in the view model, especially when the time updates every second. And before building the body, let's fix the preview to inject a sample location view model for London with its time zone set to Europe London. This lets me see live updates in the preview as I make changes. Now back to the body. I'm using an H stack to lay out the content horizontally. Inside, there is a V stack aligned to the leading edge with two text views. The first text shows the city name in a headline font. The second shows the current time string styled with a smaller sub headline font, monospaced digits for better alignment, and a secondary foreground color. A spacer pushes the content to the left, and I add vertical padding for some breathing room. This view will be used repeatedly to show all cities inside each continent section. Now, let's build the main content view that ties everything together. First, I add the observed object property to inject the world clock view model so the view reacts to live time updates. I also need to fix the preview section to provide a sample view model instance. Inside the body, I'm using a navigation stack to give us a navigation context with a title bar. Then, the core UI is a list, perfect for showing a scrollable list of continents each with their own section. I loop over view model continents using for each, and for each continent I create a section with the continent's name as the header. Inside each section, I loop again over the continent's locations, and for each location view model, I instantiate a city row view. This setup creates a clean grouped list where you can easily scan continents and cities with current times. I'll also set the list style to inset grouped for a modern look and add a navigation title world clock to the top. This structure makes it easy to expand or modify later and it keeps the UI declarative and simple. Now let's look at the world clock interview app file. Here I simply pass a new instance of world clock view model into our content view. That's all we need to do. The view model is injected as the root so the entire app can reactively update the times. Awesome! Looking at the preview, you can see the world clock in action, with times refreshing every second. Scrolling also seems to be smooth. Ok, cool. If you want me to make more iOS coding tutorials like this one, please comment down below. Alright, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, like and subscribe. See you in the next one.